I was assigned to shoot Tracy McGrady with the Orlando Magic. Used to be play, playing ball right here. For a cover of a kid's sports magazine, we had it all set up for a simulated action shot on a seamless. I was working for a very enthusiastic, very young picture editor. I loaded it back and turned around. Tracy was gone. The, he's standing on the floor, by the way. What you do when you shoot a picture like this is you crank the basket down. Okay, you take it from 10 feet to 6 feet, you put a seamless behind it, and you have them stand there and go, Wah. I'm serious, that's what you do. What's up, I asked the picture editor. He goes, the picture editor was very excited. He goes, oh, he's just gone into the locker room. He said he'd come right back, and we could go to his house. I looked at the ground, and I shook my head. I said, he ain't coming back. I've been down this road before. The picture editor looked back at me and said, no, really. He said we could come to his house. He'll come back. Both of us stared in the direction of the locker room where our star had disappeared. I had only a few frames, and I knew Tracy was already halfway to his house in a gated community outside Orlando. Gone. The shoot was over. Cover never ran. Young athletes, always stick with them. Remember, they'd rather be playing Halo. This I shot in, in Poland when John Paul was named Pope. He went back to Poland his first trip to his native land after he had been named Pontiff. The first papal trip to Poland was tough. The government was still communist. Solidarity was getting feisty, and John Paul's visit was fuel for that fire. The government put the squeeze on the press hard. They would, for instance, make it almost impossible to cover the Pope, dropping us miles from the site of the Mass, and erecting photo platforms so far from the altar you thought you were shooting a shuttle launch. This went on for two weeks, a constant battering. I was at one mass at the countryside, and I had all the glass in my bag stacked on my camera, which meant a 400 millimeter lens with a TC-14 converter with a doubler on top of that, and through all of that, the Pope was still the size of a pea. To make matters worse, I was shooting in a driving rainstorm. To add insult to injury, I was shooting for Newsweek, which meant I wasn't connected. Time had the inside track because Time had a contract photographer based in Rome. His main strengths were not photographic. He knew who had to be paid off in the Vatican. He had the place wired. I'm out there with no picture to make, so just for grins, I sweep the altar poking around. And there, not more than 50 feet from the Pope, is the time guy. The kicker was not just his proximity, but the fact that there was a cardinal holding an umbrella over him while he shot. My mood turned black. I became aware of another shooter who had wedged in next to me when the railing we were using for camera support started shaking. This guy was huffing and puffing, shooting like mad, and the whole platform was quivering. I turned, just so ready to tear somebody a new one, and I stopped. He had something like a Novo Cybersciflex, some East Block single lens reflex camera with a preset lens about half the length of my rig. It was a single shot camera, wired with a cable release he had taped to the lens barrel. He had no right hand. He would focus left-handed, then steady the camera with his stump, and then squeeze the cable with his good hand. He would then reverse the grip and advance the shutter with his stump. The rail was shaking because of all of this maneuvering. The man was working at a feverish pitch. This was his pope, his moment, his country. He was making pictures he would tell his grandchildren about. I stood there with a camera store around my neck, on assignment for a major international publication, and I had peevishly stopped working. I felt ashamed. I put my eye back in the camera. The most important piece of equipment in your bag is your attitude.